Yeah, good evening, everybody. I'm Lillian Rincon, and this is Sila, and uh, we're both here today um, to talk to you guys about machine learning. And we have tried to make this fun because I know some people love machine learning, but some people hear machine learning, and you know we're going to try to keep you up. So we we have some videos, we have um, some demonstrations, and then Sila here is going to take over. She's going to go under the hood, and she's going to go through some of the algorithms uh, with you as well. Uh, and sorry, where is okay. the clicker? Oh yeah, there it is. Thank you. Uh, so we wanted to start off with a little bit of a fun way to introduce who we are. Um, so both um, Sila and I are engineers at Skype. I'm a group program manager, um, and Sila is a big data architect. Um, we're both moms. Um, we both love math. We both studied uh, engineering in university. Um, and uh, as you can see up above, uh, we have our very own emojis, thanks to our wonderful user experience team in <laughs> Palo Alto. You can actually type Lillian and get, you know, the, but yeah, you get the <laughs> picture. Um, and if you guys are tweeting, yeah, feel free. We, we obviously don't have a question and answer period, so if you guys have questions or have any feedback for us, feel free to reach out to us, and we're happy uh, to respond. Cool. So um, the team that we both work on, we happen to sit beside each other, actually, in Palo Alto, um, and we both work on a team called the Indirect Monetization Team at Skype. And essentially, this is our charter, um, and it is really to drive innovative products um, that really drive engagement of Skype and at the same time can be monetized. Um, now, we, we can assume that everybody here in the overflow room has used Skype, so we have a short video to show you of some of the special moments that are shared on Skype. Good morning. Good morning. It's pastrami. Why don't you try the butter? Huh? You gotta mix it a little more. <laughs> video that marketing created. We love that. Um, so now we're going to get into machine learning. Um, so in the video, you saw lots of different users around the world. Um, you can imagine you know, just the number of people that use Skype to connect with their loved ones. Um, we have a lot of data. Um, so just to list some numbers, you know, we have billions of connections, hundreds of millions of active users, um, and hundreds of thousands of features. So features being things like age, gender, uh, betweenness, um, and machine learning really is, is powerful for many ways, but in particularly for our team, um, we use it really to figure out how to personalize the experience um, and how to really target the products that we recommend to our, to our users. Uh, so we wanted to actually show you a product, um, and then we're going to get into the machine learning. But So in the indirect monetization team, uh, this is one of the products that we're debuting this year, and the concept is that of a sponsored contact. Um, so today, many of you guys might go into Skype, and you might add a family friend you know, and, and connect with them, and you know that person. Uh, but imagine coming to Skype and us being able to predict that you, know, you happen to be a superhero fan and that you might want to play a game with the superhero sponsored contact. So think of like a brand, potentially a celebrity, a team, and you being wanting, you know, you wanting to engage with them. And one thing I didn't tell you about Sila is that she's a superhero fanatic. <laughs> um, and, but we're going to find out now, basically, um, with this sponsored contact, um, who her superhero crush is. Thank you. Yeah, and this sponsored contact is uh, basically built um, using machine learning and some of the NLP stuff. Okay. And let's see what it's going to do. And uh, let me tell you, what is it asking? Um, do you like to fly? Mm, maybe not. I don't want to fly. <laughs> yeah. It's later. It's 
always happens in a demo. <laughs> uh, do I want to wear a cape? Uh -huh. No. Why would you even ask? <laughs> Are you a persistent do-gooder? Yes, I would like to think so. Are you a geek? Mm, not sure. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, am I accident prone? Definitely, yes. <laughs> oh no, I will not trip on the wires, I'll be careful. And um, do I have a good sense of humor? Yeah, I'm taking it easy, so yes, I think so. Do you like high tech gadgets? Oh yeah, definitely. Awesome. Oh. It predicted that I'm a big fan of Captain America, which is true. Thanks to my son, I watched it one million times almost. <laughs> <laughs> Let's watch the video. Hi, I'm Chris Evans from Marvel's Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Marvel and Skype are on the lookout for some real heroes out there, the real people who give something extra every day, and we think they deserve to be saluted. To nominate someone you know, send us a Skype video message telling us who it is, what they do, and why they'd love to hear from us. It'll be hard to pick just one everyday hero, but it'll be our honor to hear your stories. Cool. That's cool. So now we'll go back to the deck. Um, so that was fun. We figured out that her superhero crush is Captain America. It is also mine. I love Chris Evans. Um, <laughs> he looks like my husband, and I tell him that all the time. Um, <laughs> So, um, so one of the important ways in which we use machine learning is we use it, um, you know, obviously in the product itself, but um, to figure out how to show, how to determine who to show this to, right? That's a really important part of it. If she wasn't a fan of superheroes, this really would have been irrelevant. Um, and so I'm going to hand it over to her in a minute. Um, but basically, there's two main reasons that we're looking at machine learning right now. One is um, to find communities within the users to figure out what kind of communities exist within the Skype users. Um, and what types of services might be relevant to those users. Um, and then secondly, uh, to build recommendation systems. So, you know, to figure out that Sila is a superhero fan and she hasn't engaged with the super, uh, you know, superhero contact crush contact. And, um, yeah. Excellent. So I'm, I'm going to hand it over to her. She's going to go under the hood now. Thank you. As Lillian said, detecting communities is very critical to Skype, especially in the context of when you are personalizing user experiences and also when you're targeting. And in this context, basically, we want to uh, partition the graph and to see uh, the communities. Uh, traditional approaches like um, point-based algorithms, um, like uh, k-means clustering, won't work here because you can't really uh, partition the graph uh, by clear partitioning of the nodes. So we have to use graph partitioning methods. So there is a clear um, a distinction between the communities, and you minimize the number of connections between uh, uh, between the communities. So basically, we fall back to graph partitioning methods. In this context, we use a spectral clustering. Some of you in this room may be aware of. Spectral clustering draws principles from um, uh, spectral graph theory, where you imagine a huge um, graph of Skype, like 300, 400 million users. Now, how do we partition the graph? So what we do is we basically take um, the top uh, k eigenvectors of uh, the Laplacian matrix and use that to uh, simultaneously split the graph into k clusters. And it basically works, uh, works very well. And uh, you, if you're familiar with the graph theory, you can see that this is a relaxation of the optimal cut problem where you take the top, topmost eigenvector and split the graph into uh, two parts. So here is uh, some of the details of the uh, spectral clustering. And now once we detect the communities, uh, we focus our efforts on uh, uh, basically um, building a recommendation system that will suggest appropriate services to um, appropriate communities. And uh, we use uh, uh, collaborative filtering for building such recommendation system. The idea is when you build a recommendation system, you basically um, suggest some services to users with the expectation that there is a maximum probability that the user will engage with the service. And uh, uh, we use collaborative filtering. And um, collaborative filtering, if, if you're familiar with that, uses um, 
past history of the user. And it also uses uh, the similarity between items that the user has recommended before. And there is a cool, um, fantastic history behind the popularity of collaborative filtering. Back in 2006, Netflix came up with uh, their Cinematch challenge for $1 million. So whoever beats the, um, beats the RMSC ratings of Netflix would actually get the $1 million. And they made millions of uh, uh, ratings available for the competition. And there were a lot of teams, a lot of excitement, and it ran for three years. During the first two years, there wasn't much progress made. But it was not until the team started merging, combining their ideas, collaborating, and actually coming up uh, with uh, different algorithms, merging them together, and, and uh, building more complex algorithms that they started making progress. And uh, that basically added a lot of uh, advanced research into collaborative filtering. And in the end, AT&T's uh, research team won the, um, won the competition. And, and the reason uh, they won the competition is because their, their ratings, of course, beat uh, Netflix RMSC ratings. But um, they, they actually uh, submitted their results 20 minutes before the uh, second best winning team. So there was a lot of drama, and uh, there was a lot of excitement, fit enough to be a Hollywood movie. So, uh, so that's, that's how collaborative filtering became very popular. And if you see Amazon's uh, recommendation system, or if you see Netflix uh, movie suggestions, you would see a hybrid system of this collaborative uh, filtering in the back. And uh, um, let's go a little deeper into um, uh, collaborative filtering. We at Skype, uh, kind of uh, relate to this collaborative experience, not not for the algorithm, but but in general, how collaborating, uh, collaborative filtering uh, research has been done. Why? Uh, what's the driving force behind that? Some of the problems that we solve at Skype today actually. Um, can only be solved with an integrated effort from a lot of fields, um, machine learning, computer science, uh, information retrieval, uh, graph theory, and also um, a combination of behavioral and social sciences. Without these, we cannot solve uh, some of the problems. And let's go deeper into um, collaborative filtering and see how we use it at Skype. Collaborative filtering uses two different approaches usually. One is the neighborhood approach, and the second one is the latent uh, factorization. Um, I'm going a little uh, technical here, but some of you may be aware. But let's rush through and then see where we end up with. So basically, neighborhood approach uses uh, u um, users' uh, ratings that, um, that are there before. And basically, it uses the similar ratings by the user. So. Um, in a whole, it basically ignores a lot of other ratings uh, given by the user um, uh, that are not similar. So it's kind of uh, is good at um, detecting immediate relationships or localized relationships, but it's not good at uh, looking at the system on an overall perspective. Whereas latent factorization is pretty good because um, it, it basically gives you an overall structure to um, uh, to uh, to relate to simultaneously to all the items. But it is at the same time a little bit bad at identifying localized relationships. So when you build a re uh, recommendation system, you want to combine both the uh, effects and build a hybrid system. So that's what we do at, um, um, at Skype. As you see here, there are uh, three parts to the equation. And first part is basically um, baseline factors. What's the average rating? And what's as a user, what's your deviation from the average rating? And as a service, what's your deviation from the average rating? So we consider that. And the second part is the neighborhood model. And the third part is basically latent factorization, where um, basically users and the items, the products, are transformed into a common latent factor space where they can be compared. Usually, you can't compare items with products. Uh, sorry, products products with users. But with this approach, you can directly compare both of them. And let's take a, an example and analyze how we use it at, uh, at Skype. See, um, let's take an example here. We have six users, and there are emoticons that we use. 
and there are different ratings. As you see, there is no uh, explicit rating in Skype. When you use emoticons in Skype, you just use them. You don't rate them, right? But here, what we do is we basically take uh, the transactions that happened before, what user used what, and also we combine it with some uh, temporal dynamics and also some of the other data and come up with the ratings that, uh, uh, that you see on the screen. And in the screen, you see that Lillian rated five for Captain, Captain America, but she hasn't really rated anything else. So when she's online, what's the best service that we can recommend? So that's the problem we need to solve. And as we've seen in the previous slide, okay, you have baseline factors, and you have neighborhood model, and the latent factorization. Latent factorization, as we discussed, it basically transforms the space into latent factors where uh, items and products are comparable. So let's see. Um, let's calculate Lillian's uh, possible rating for a superhero crush. So it's the, in, the, in the item factor table, you see it at the second, um, second uh, row. And in the users, Lillian is on the fifth the column. So you basically multiply both of them, boom, you have the rating. And you combine it with neighborhood, um, neighborhood method and also the baseline factors. So you have calculated the possible rating that Lillian would give. And, and also for the other, other, um, other emoticons. So there you go. So therefore, we recommend superheroes to Lillian. So that's how, it, in, in, a, in a small scale, that's how we would explain the recommendation system. Cool. Awesome. So just to summarize, we showed you a demo, and um, we shared with you some of the machine learning algorithms that we're using. Um, and really, like our net goal is to end up with Maybe not as cute as these little people, but really happy, engaged <laughs> users, you know. And so we're, we're really hoping that over the next couple of months, you're going to see more and more of these types of features. Um, and again, um, if you guys have any questions or any feedback, um, feel free to reach out to us. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>